My co-plans from Bovis, M Bovis, Bovis, whatever you call it, we began the week with the government's decision to attempt to eradicate it. Now, we fancy ourselves as a farming nation, and of course we are, but more than three quarters of us live in urban areas, and it's at times like this perhaps that many townies realise how little we know about farming and crisis management in farming. Throughout this week, we've received an enormous number of questions from you. In short, what happens to the animals and what happens to the meat is the theme of most of the questions we've received. So we recruited an expert. Peter Conley is CEO of AMSCO Meat, one of the country's three major meat processors, who are in the process of, um, well, slaughtering the cattle that have been ordered to be slaughtered. Thousands of cattle have been killed since M. Bovis was detected last July, and there's 126,000 more to go. And as Pete Conley told me, this is already a busy time of the year. Currently, plants are full, and that's quite normal. That situation will continue through most of June, and that's the result of, you know, we've, we're going uh, through autumn into winter. Um, the dairy herd is, is um, being dried off, and this is the time of year where we get a spike in numbers coming from the dairy industry with um, cows that come to slaughter um, out of the cow-cow herd. So it's normally a busy time. Has Bovis added to how busy you are? Bovis has put additional pressure on. Um, I think in the, in the scheme of things with the overall industry capacity, the levels that we can operate to for ANSCO in particular currently uh, we're managing with, with what we're having to do. I think that if we were to, um, if we were to have a, a huge influx now of livestock, which I don't expect, um, it would put pressure on, but I think with the numbers they're talking, some 30,000 head of cattle in the first wave that would probably start to come uh, for processing in the next three to four weeks' time. I think the industry probably has sufficient capacity to be able to manage that. Right. Can we talk about the process? Do you have to treat uh, cattle with Embovis or who are suspected of having Embovis any differently? Yes, we do. So um, those cattle... Uh, Effectively, they're directed to slaughter. Um, once we, uh, once those come onto a processing site, they need to be um, to be segregated, and then we we work them through the process. Um, we process those animals, and then we're required to go through a, a cleaning program. So, obviously, we disinfect our plants. We um, we also have to disinfect. Um, any transport operators that have been involved in bringing those those animals onto our facilities. And are they treated after slaughter the same way all the other cattle coming through at this time of year are treated? Y yes, and, they are. And so they're going yes. into the food chain the same as every other beast that's coming through? Yes, um, that that's the case. There's absolutely no human health risk from M bovis cattle. There's no food safety risk from in bovis cattle and you know mycoplasma bovis is a global disease my understanding is that today only Norway is the country that, that doesn't have it so if you look at the major beef processing regions of the world, of the world North America um, Australia, South America um, they, it's all managed within their herds Okay so for people who are concerned about this, you're saying don't be, but if they remain concerned, there is actually no way of knowing whether the meat they're buying at their butchers or their supermarkets or wherever is from the bovis stock or not from the bovis stock. I think at the moment the, the, um, they should, you know, we, we've all been reassured, the government's reassured us, and, and as I say, there's, there's plenty of, um, of global experience in terms of this disease. So, But... From a New Zealand market perspective, these animals are coming into the processing plants. They're being processed into um, a product form, with, which by and large um, probably doesn't, you know, I think if people think that they're going into a supermarket and buying a steak, um, and, and it's an, it could be from an Embovis processed cattle, uh, that's not the case. This... The, Product large well, the the cattle that have come to slaughter certainly in the case of our company anyway, um, have come from the dairy herd. That the the um, the products that we produce off those animals, 
we would describe as a manufacturing beef product. So they're very lean, they're very suitable products. They're actually an excellent ingredient into um, ground beef processing. So they would be used in things like mints and patties and meatballs um, and, and products like that. So they're not your table steak cuts. They're not the products you'd traditionally buy in your supermarket or restaurant. Peter, what, who's paying for these animals? So if a slaughter is ordered, if MPI go in and say, yep, your stock is contaminated or there is a real risk of contamination, what, what, what's the market say about how much those animals are worth? So we, um, you know, how we've been operating, how ANSCO's been operating is effectively we've been, we've been paying those farmers um, for any cows that come to ANSCO, the same as what we would pay to any other supplier of cows to ANSCO. So, for example, if uh, if you sent a cow to ANSCO next week, and I'm just talking in terms of averages here, but let's say uh, you'd, you'd get $750 a cow. I guess the issue for um, the, the farmers that are sending these cattle to slaughter is what those cattle are worth as a dairy animal. And so let's say a dairy animal, and, and you know, I'm, I'm not sure what they would be exactly worth, but let's say they're worth 2500 There's obviously a significant difference between that animal as a milk-producing animal um, versus what it's worth as a meat animal. Right, so a productive dairy cow is worth more than a cow that is simply uh, meat. And Correct. So Who's paying the difference? Who pays the difference? Is that the MPI compensation, is it, between yeah, so the dairy value the, and the meat value? Yeah, so that's the MPI um, compensation piece, and, and that's where they pick up the difference between what a farmer supplier would realise as a meat animal versus what um, the animals deem to be worth. So, so are you slaughtering animals that wouldn't otherwise be slaughtered? In other words, are you slaughtering animals that are in the height of their dairy productivity? Yes, we will be. Um, you know, normally we would get cows when they uh, they're no longer in. At, well, they're effectively at the end of their productive life from a dairy perspective. So, yes, definitely with the um, with the uh, infected properties and restricted properties and the cattle that are being directed to slaughter. Um, you know, that's that's a situation where whole herds are being taken out. Yeah. And um, and so we're ending up with with animals which you know obviously could be very early into the stages of being productive animals. And that and that speaks to the difference between their meat value and their market value, right? Which Correct. is the MPI. Correct. Right, the, okay. Correct. Uh, yeah. it, pregnant? You, have you had to slaughter any pregnant animals? Um, I can't really answer that. I'm not totally sure. Obviously. Um, animals normally are scanned for pregnancy and, and, and obviously farmers wouldn't send those to slaughter. I suspect that with the Embovis cattle coming through, um, given that we're seeing whole herds taken out and that uh, cows are in their pregnancy cycle, there will be some pregnant animals coming to slaughter. That's unfortunate, but I think that's, um, that's a, a, a necessary outcome given the decision that's been made. That's Peter Conley, who is the CEO of AMSCO, uh, one of the country's three major meat processors.